ProLin PLN. Hello, my name is Tony Lyle, a CAM application engineer at ProLin. In this deck bite, I'm going to demonstrate the IPW or in process workpiece in NX CAM. So, what is the IPW? The IPW is how NX tracks the material removed from your raw stock to the final model based on toolpaths of generated operations. This way, you can drive toolpaths to only cut material that's been left behind by previous toolpaths or operations. Let's take a look at some examples. Here I've got a part that I'm going to run side one in a vise, and I'm going to run side two on a pallet. So let's define our workpiece that's in the vise. We're going to specify a part. This is what we're actually going to cut to. And we're going to define our blank. This is our raw stock. So I'm going to lay in a couple of operations in on this. Uh, I'm going to create a cavity mill with a 12 millimeter bull nose. We're going to use the workpiece that's in the vise. And we're going to rough it out. Um, I'm going to change my cut level to uh, 10 millimeters deep because we don't have to cut too deep under this part and we'll generate that and we'll take a look at the in-process workpiece, the resulting in-process workpiece for that operation. So I'll show the IPW and from this raw stock to what the toolpath left behind is, is this result. So you can see maybe the, the corners have not completely been finished on the pocket. There's a corner radius at the bottom. There's still stock all over it since we used a, a roughing mill method. I'm going to go ahead and hide this blank away. So let's create another operation. We're just going to do a face milling operation. We'll use the same tool, but a finishing operation. We'll use the floor as our cut area and generate it. And I'm also going to create a Z-level profile operation with a 8 millimeter end mill just to cut the pocket. We'll cut the outside of this part as well. So we'll specify our cut area. We'll cut the pocket and the outside of the part. And I want to cut that face of that pocket, so I need to cut between the levels. And we'll generate this operation. So this will go in and finish the outside of the part and the pocket and the, the floor of the pocket as well. So again, we can take a look at that IPW now. So now all we have left are the holes. You can see the pocket is finished now. So let's go ahead and drill these holes. And I'm going to start with the 6.75 millimeter drill. The holes here are a M8 by 1.25 and an 8 millimeter drilled hole. So let's start with the tapped holes with the 6.75. I'm going to select these features and it's going to give us a pink preview display of what the IPW is going to take away. So we're going to select these three holes. You can see again that pink display of what it's going to drill. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this 8 millimeter hole as well just to show something on the next operation. So this is only going to drill 6.75 away from this hole, not the entire 8 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and generate those drills and now let's go ahead and create a operation with the 8 millimeter drill. Now I'm going to select the 8 millimeter holes and again you'll see the pink preview display of the drilled hole. Now when I select this one, this one has already been drilled with a 6.75 so it's, it shows basically a ring of what the material is that's left behind. So you can see what all it's going to drill, what all material it's going to remove. And I'll go ahead and generate those. All right, so now that we have this part finished on this side, we'll move over to the second side on the pallet. We'll flip the part over. So again, we're going to specify our part. 
and our blank, but instead of specifying geometry or a bounding block or a cylinder, we're going to use this IPW, in-process workpiece. And we're going to give it the source is the workpiece that's in the vise here. And we'll update it. Now to give us that in-process workpiece from side one, from the vise workpiece. Work you can see what's been brought over from the vice's part. So now we can lay toolpaths on here. We can do an adaptive milling operation with a, we'll use a 20 millimeter end mill and we're gonna switch over to the workpiece on the pallet. And I'll adjust my cut level just to this floor here and generate. So that's just gonna cut away a strictly roughing operation that's going to cut away. Now this is a 20 millimeter uh, end mill that we're using, a bull nose end mill. So in these areas, in these corners, it's going to leave quite a bit of material. So we want to do next what we, what we call a rest milling operation, where it's just going to cut the rest away. It's going to cut what was left behind. So first let's take a look at this IPW and notice in these corners, once this previews, that you'll see a lot of material that's left behind in these corners here, here, here. So we want to quickly and efficiently cut those away. So we will create another operation and we're going to use a rest milling operation with a smaller tool. I've just got, I'll just use a six millimeter high feed mill and we'll generate this one. So again, it's going to look at what was left behind and just going to cut away what's necessary, reducing the amount of air cuts and they, uh, to process this part. So here's our toolpath coming in, cutting just what it needs to cut, cutting what was left behind. So we'll take a look at this resulting IPW. And you'll see these corners are, are now cut away a little bit more. All right, so let's look, in, look at another example of how we can use this IPW. I'm gonna look at another file I have, which is basically just reversed. I'm cutting the other side first and flipping it over onto the pallet here. Um, so this part is complete. I've, I've completely finished this part on, on side one and we can show the IPW and I'll just flip it, flip the IPW to the pallet on this one as well. So here's our IPW, nice clean finish on it. So again, just like the previous one, we would set up a part and we'll specify our blank as the IPW in process workpiece of the workpiece that's in the vise, and we can update that. So again, we'll see that it's using that in process workpiece that this one left off with. But we could also use different source files. So we don't have to use just the just the geometry that's within this part file. We can use other part files. So we can browse for another part file and use it. I've got one open here. This The first example we showed is cam core one. So we're gonna use the workpiece on pallet from the previous file that we looked at. And updating that one, now you can see that you can use different parts as IPWs if you don't like to use the if you don't want to do the part from side one and side two in the same part file, if you want to split those up, it's easy to do. Uh, so that's just a quick overview of the IPW. Thank you for watching the snack bite. Check out more ProLim snack bites and lunch bites on our YouTube. ProLim PLM.